What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode. Uh, I know it's kind of been a while. It took a bit of a break. But uh, anyway, we're going to make some drinks today. So as some of you may know, I recently held a fundraiser and I announced that five people would be chosen to select cocktails for my next video. So I'm going to make five cocktails today. And one of them is basically like a rainbow Long Island iced tea. So I'll, I'll be on my ass by the end of this. But anyway, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the first drink. It is called the American Beauty. I got this drink recipe out of Mr. Boston Bartender Guide. Uh, this was requested by Amber. She's not very much of a cocktail person. She didn't know what drink to request, and uh, she said that she likes wine. So I said there's actually a great cocktail that has wine in it, and that's the American Beauty. It gets topped with port, and I think it's a great, great cocktail. This is one of my favorite cocktails that I found out of this book. I'm gonna do a half ounce of each ingredient, which is orange juice, grenadine, half ounce of dry vermouth, a bit of brandy, a bit is equal to half an ounce in case you weren't sure. And not much, you just you just want a little bit, quarter teaspoon of creme de menthe. The recipe calls for white creme de menthe, but it actually doesn't matter. Green is the one I've got, so that's the one we're using. <laughs> Give her a shake. Gorgeous. Ice in there. Now I'm not gonna double strain this one since there's already ice in the drink. You know what you're thinking, isn't that way too big of a glass? That's why we top it with port wine. Gorgeous. Okay, so that is the American Beauty. You're welcome, Amber. Mm. That's so good. You know, the first version of this I made, I actually used 19 Crimes Cali Red Blend, and it was really good with that. So if you use like a sort of red blend, it's a different mouthfeel, different taste altogether, but I, I really appreciated that. If you want a little sweeter, grab some port. That's the way it's supposed to be made anyway. Don't be weird like me. So good. It's very fruity. It's very fruity, but like very spirit forward at the same time. Uh -huh. I cannot get enough of that. I love this cocktail. Okay, so this next request, this comes from Beth. She asked me to make a blackberry mojito, which uh, I've never had before. I'm not even sure I've heard of anybody making that. I'm just gonna kind of wing it. I did actually have to look up how to make a mojito again because I it's been a while. The first thing you want to do is muddle the mint before the blackberry. You don't want to crush up the mint. Put a little pressure on it just enough to get the oils out for the aroma and the taste. So we're going to do that first. I'm going to toss the mint in the larger shaker before we shake it. And then we'll throw the blackberries in because we're going to actually crush these. We don't want to do that to the mint, like I said. So I'm going to do four blackberries. I've never made this before, so I'm just winging it. All right, so we're going to muddle that. Okay, and once that's all muddled, go ahead and just toss it into the shaker. Now for a mojito, the standard ingredients in addition to the mint are lime juice, which that should be just enough lime juice. And then two ounces of light rum. I'm going to do about a half ounce of simple syrup. And then we give it a shake. The thing of beauty. Strain into your glass. <laughs> I probably should have double strained this actually. There's chunks of blackberry coming out. Some people like that though. Like my girlfriend is a big fan of pulpy juices. I would advise that you double strain. And then it says like you're typically supposed to top it with club soda, but I hate club soda, so I usually just do a little bit of tonic water. And you garnish with a lime wheel, which I just cut like an amateur, but that's okay. So there you go. That is a, <laughs> yeah, definitely double strain it, but there you go, Beth. Blackberry mojito. Oh no. Well, there goes the garnish. So, hmm, that's interesting. Let me, let me, let me contemplate this for a moment. Well, 
for one, it's chunky, which is my fault. But I think it could maybe even use a little more blackberry. You know what? Oh shit, some of these are going bad. No! Ugh. Ugh. That's so gross. Okay, let's see here. I'm gonna actually give it a little bit of a stir. Yeah, I think maybe do eight or nine blackberries and then I'll even it out. So there you go, blackberry mojito. So the next one is a very specific request made by Brian, uh, which luckily for me happens to be a mocktail, which is a non-alcoholic cocktail. Uh, so I can take a break from the suffering that I'm bound to be dealing with tonight. He wanted a Spider-Man themed mocktail called the Spider Mock, and he wanted me to make it with blueberries and raspberries. So I came up with a concoction of my own design. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. So it's a Spider-Man themed cocktail, the Spider Mock. So the first thing you're going to do is take uh, maybe about three raspberries and about five or six blueberries. There you go, so that was six there. Then you're gonna add about a half ounce of grenadine and you're gonna muddle that all together. Okay, so that's all muddled. So now we wanna grab chilled glass and we wanna put in maybe ounce and a half to two ounces of ginger ale. I just fill it to about halfway or so. Now we're gonna take our little muddled concoction here. We're gonna double strain that if we can down the side of the glass. This is the trickier part. And the next thing we wanna do in our other shaker tin is add a little bit of lemon juice. I'm gonna do about three quarter ounce of lemon juice. You do what you want. And I'll say this about any cocktail. I mean, like there are basic recipes that you can follow that are traditional, but you make it to your preference. If you want it to be more lemony, add more lemon. If you want it to be more fruity, add more fruit. It's that simple. So with that lemon juice, we're just gonna put in one drop of blue food dye. Boom, that is already enough. Now we're gonna stir it up. Once that's good and blue, you wanna very gingerly pour this over top of the other stuff. Um, well, fortunately this is non-alcoholic because uh, I actually screwed this up. So let me, let me try again. I'm going to try pouring it a different way, just in case that's how I screwed it up. I'm going to experiment a bit here. So just pour it down the side of the glass like this. All right, now I want to say this will go a little more as planned. Oh, that's already looking good. There we go. That's the look we're going for. That's the spider mock red and blue layers. There you go, Brian, as requested. So this recipe is a little bit on the sweeter side. Uh, you want to make sure to just give it a bit of a stir so you're not getting straight grenadine. But as long as you like sweet cocktails and you don't want to drink something alcoholic, it's a pretty good go. Oh yeah. Okay, so this next one is a Mai Tai. I've never actually made a Mai Tai. So now we're going to get two ounces of Jamaican rum specifically. I'm using Appleton Estate. I'm just getting acclimated to Jamaican rum, so I don't know what other kinds to recommend. But uh, this is actually a recommendation of uh, Le Top Shelf, like the, the French word for the Le, Le Top Shelf. He, uh, he's a good buddy of mine, and he makes some really good YouTube videos. You should go check him out. Two ounces in there. Now, I actually don't have orange curacao. Uh, that was recommended for this recipe, but I'm gonna use Cointreau this time around. And as the top shelf would say it, Cointreau, except I can't actually do the accent, I can't do it. So about a half ounce of that, and I'm gonna use my new hardcore juicer. This is also a gift courtesy of the top shelf. So pop over to his channel and thank him for me. His videos are much more high quality than mine. Now you wanna use a quarter ounce of Demerara syrup. 
and a quarter ounce of Orgit, which I just spent the last five hours making just so I can have a quarter ounce of this for this recipe. So Angie and Steve, you're welcome. Oh yeah, I didn't say the names. <laughs> so my aunt and uncle both requested that I make a Mai Tai. So that's, that's who this drink is for. I'm sorry, I got sidetracked. I'm just gonna shake it. That did not take long, holy crow. And then that gets a mint sprig garnish, which we're going to throw beautifully on top, just like that. And then top it off with a little more crushed ice. Nice. Now the recipe I was looking at calls for a lime garnish, but I, I just don't feel like cutting a lime right now. So that is a Mai Tai. I'm gonna give this a little sip. Oh, that's crazy good. This is, yeah, this is my first time having one. I'm, I'm a fan. The rum is so subtle compared to everything else, but it gives just enough of a pop to the, to the citrus and the smooth fruit flavors. And that orgit, man, that orgit adds such a nice note to it. I'm a fan, this is cool. That's going to be an easy one to get hammered on. Okay, now this last one comes at the request of Rebecca. She didn't actually know what to recommend, but she wanted me to make something layered. So I threw some recommendations at her based on what I've made and some other things that I looked up. And the one that she chose is Rainbow Road, which is not my own recipe. It comes from the Drunken Moogle. Uh, if you go to drunkenmoogle.com, they make some amazing cocktails, mostly based around video games, but also some other things. Uh, so that's where I got this one. I don't know exactly who made it, but if anybody in particular is credited on their website, I'll go ahead and throw that in the description below. So make sure you go check them out. So the first thing that we do is we take four ounces of orange juice. Then we're gonna add to that half ounce of gin. There's a reason this is the last one I'm making. This is gonna put me right on my ass. So we're going to give that a little bit of a shake. Just let that sit at the bottom of the glass. And I'm using a large martini glass. If you have something that you would rather use besides that, that is okay. You just want to make sure it's about the same size because this is a hefty drink. So now we're going to take a third ounce each of grenadine and dark rum and just mix those together. I'm just gonna give those a brief stir. And all we need to do there is just pour these down the side of the glass so they settle at the bottom. Perfect. Now the last part, we take three ounces of vodka. Then we mix that with two splashes, the recipe says, of blue curacao. I'm gonna guess that's maybe about a half ounce, maybe a little more. So I'm going to say, hey, I'll just do two thirds of an ounce. Go right in the middle. Brief stir. There we go. Nice. So we got a little bit of blue and green. It looks like the colors got stirred up just a little bit, but that's mostly okay. But there you go. That's the rainbow road. It still looks pretty cool. Now that that's all said and done, I'm going to go try to drink all these and not die. But you know, mistakes aside, this has been a really fun journey. I really appreciate everybody that, uh, that contributed to the fundraiser. It made a huge difference. And, uh, this is the least I could do. You know, I didn't really know how to return the favor, but anyway, thank you guys again. Uh, and I'll hopefully see you in the next video. Take care.